Hi everyone, this is Jacques Rousseau from New Jack Entertainment. Just bringing you a quick update of our activism engine and just a quick overview this in this video so you can see what it's all about and how it works. When you purchase the activism package from us, you'll be getting an email with a few downloads and instructions on how to use it. One of the downloads will be for your server. The server is external from the Unity so it doesn't work directly in Unity. You can install it on any machine that you have and uh, that use it on that machine. So you can also install it on a cloud server if you don't want it to put it on a local machine. That is very easy and we'll be bringing out some more tutorials on how to do that. In this uh, overview I'm just going to show you guys how activism looks and works in Unity. That's the basic stuff. So with your second download that you get in, uh, in the email it will be for the Atavism package. You just drag the Atavism package into your uh, new Unity scene uh, project and then uh, it will open up and you'll see I've already done that to save a bit of time. Uh, it brings in a, a few folders here. The basic Atavism package at the moment has a AGF Access Game Factory scene loader and uh, what they did is they created a scene for us that we can use for our demo that you you'll be getting so it's very we want to say thank you to them uh, it's a very good package if you're interested in uh, using their package uh, i definitely uh, say uh, ask that you have a look at it it's a very good package to to build your world and stuff like that uh, if you don't want to use uh, the access game factory you can use any type of world and terrain editing software that the unity has on the asset store or you can just use the unity's own terrain asset system that they have in the in unity itself makes it uh, very easily to, to build any type of world with it uh, it's set up in a way atavism is set up in a way that it's basically more for the communication between players and so forth and not so much as in the actual like terrain and and flowers and and buildings and so on and placing of it so it makes it very simple to take even a single player game or that you built in Unity to convert it into a multiplayer MMO game very easily. So you can see here we've got the AGF folders. The uh, next one is the Atavism Objects. Atavism Objects is just uh, information about the Atavism and how to create stuff. That's more uh, code side. The U Atavism Unity is your editor. Uh, you in Unity Editor, which I'll be showing you shortly. Uh, you have characters. Characters is just a few character templates that we've added for you guys to use. It's just some of our smooth characters. We also sell these uh, smooth characters on our asset store. Uh, we have currently about 40, we can have about 44 different types of characters that you can use. So if you guys are interested in, in liking them, you can definitely go have a look at the asset store for that. A resource folder is very important. A resource folder for instance if you're creating a, a mob or so some or item you know you need to put the prefabs in a resource folder so that the, the game can access uh, the items as on the fly uh, you can see the content content has your bags there's a bag set up already you know you have equipment display items so all these things are pretty available and easy to set up in and there will be more tutorials on them in the future. Then you have standard assets. Uh, one thing we did add into this normal Unity standard asset is the Atavism core. That is very important to make sure that, that you have that in. So don't think that standard assets is just from the Unity stuff. Uh, we added in the Atavism core as well into it so to make sure that is there. So for what you do is once you um, got everything imported you can uh, play around with the world and so forth. Uh, just to do a quick overview for you of the unit, uh, the Atavism in Unity Editor. You just go to Windows, uh, Atavism Online. It'll open up a little editor like this. You know, you can drag and drop it, move it around, and you can also dock it. So you can see it's got a, it's dockable and wherever you want to dock it. Uh, just to go over the Atavism Editor. We have different categories on the left hand side. The, when it starts off, it has all the categories. These are all your plugins, and this is your inspector area. So if you click on a plugin, you know, it will open up in the inspector area. And then you have 
them categorized as well. So if you wanted to do a quick category, so for instance, you just want to work on your server stuff or your mobs and so on, everything will be categorized on these ones. We also have a, a search system. So for instance, uh, we wanted to do, we go to say server and you want to search for something that's got to do with a mobs, you know, or so on. If you go to all, you know, it brings up the, the mobs, you know, if you wanted to change it a little bit. Uh, so let's go back to all, we should reset this. So going over the plugins, you have your database setup. Your database setup will be set up, setting up your connections and so forth. You have instances. Instances uh, will be for creating different instances in the world. Even the main world that you log in the first time is actually instance. So this is for any type of scene that you want to add into the, the game. You know, you can create instance. The other thing to note is also the main world, like I said, is an instance, but some instances you can change so how many players can log into it. For instance, the main world has unlimited amount of players to log into it, where uh, you can do dungeon or smaller instances where you have maybe four or five players logging into it. When you create something, you see there's a few tabs up here, and some of them. Uh, this is your creation tab for the inspector. Uh, that is your editable editor tab. Like you see, we've got the main world as an instance here, so you can edit stuff in it. And then you have an information tab. We'll, this will be more coming, more information in the next updates, where it just explains each plugin for you in more specifics, and it helps you with tutorials and so forth. Other plugin you can look at here is uh, the mobs one. This is for creating mobs in your game. You can see it's very simple. You have subcategories, subtitles. Uh, you just drag and drop your uh, game object onto here, which which is going to be your mob. You know, you can set species, uh, mob types, factions, and so forth. Uh, you also have base animations. One thing we wanted to do is all these drop downs. Most of them will have additional editing. Uh, capabilities. For instance, if you wanted to change, we've got a bunch of uh, species in here, but if you wanted to add your own species, you'll be able to edit them. For instance, uh, also mob types, anything that's a drop down, you'll be able to make it available so that you can edit them to create a total custom system for yourself as well. You can set your mob combat if you're here, for instance. Uh, damage type, all these damage types you can change as well. Uh, you have attack speed, uh, level, maximum level, damage done, and so forth. That's for mobs. Uh, it shows you how easily it is to create a mob in that. Uh, then we have loot tables. Loot tables is set up in a system where you create different, you can create different types of loot tables. For instance, uh, you can start off with weaponry. If you have a loot, a loot system for a loot table for weapons, uh, just basic weapons. You can set each weapon to have a drop rate as you add the items to them, uh, the chance of drop for them, and then each you can set another loot table. For instance, uh, magic, magic loot, uh, weapons. Uh, when you go to your mobs and you add your loot tables to your mobs for for drops, you can set percentage on each loot table as well. So it is very versatile in the sense of uh, how you want to um, set your drop rates and stuff for certain items. Then we have items. Items has got a, a few things in them that you can change and so forth. Uh, currently, we have a few settings here. But like I said, you know, you can change these in uh, in the future. Uh, armor, consumables. If you click on consumables, it changes it accordingly to whatever you need information from it. Uh, for instance, armor is different. Armor, you have slots that you add in for your character. Uh, shoulders, chest, and so forth. So it, it it's, uses the slot system uh, to specify um, the interface in, in the inventory as well as to adding it to an object uh, or a, a character object that you have in the game. Uh, it, most items has uh, common, uncommon, rare, and epic settings for quality settings. Uh, this can also be changed in the future. Also some binding settings, you can set what binding, uh, you have a purchase price for each item, and you can also choose what currency you wanted to use for it, uh, as well as adding a tooltips to it. 
and we can go down so weapons is that one you can see weapons has got similar stuff into it materials will be just basic things that are like materials you want to use for building and so forth and then junk just the same just junk stuff items that you just want to get dropped in the, in the game uh, skills uh, these few down here skills abilities effects quests uh, and damage and stats those will plugins will all be coming available in the next couple of weeks we try and do a update every week or bi-weekly at least on uh, in the alpha version so the plugins are coming in very quickly and uh, we're keeping everything up to date very uh, so that you know we can uh, move this uh, alpha version fast forward uh, skills will very easy to set up as you can see there abilities as well there's quite a few things that you can add into it it makes it very versatile once again uh, all these are just ease of production we want to make sure that because the unit the MMOs is so content grabbers you know we wanted to make these type of content so easily for people to add in and very quickly uh, prototype it and go forth from there you have effects quests quests is just as simple there will be different types of quests that you can do your normal pickup delivery but then you can also customize your quests into whatever type of quest type you you want to actually add into it then stats is uh, to adding stats to characters like base stats we got one in here as an example uh, resistance stats for instance you know you can change it and then you can say what resistance it is to you know you can add uh, the stat function that's programmed into it and then uh, spawn setup is uh, we just recently added this in it allows you to set up your uh, characters reason why we also added started adding this in the next one will be uh, setting up uh, Yuma the Yuma character system so for character creation that'll be available in the next update uh, so you know with the spawn stats uh, set up for characters when you create a new character for a player you can set up what race there is like you can have different races uh, different classes you can say where they want to spawn in which instance they want to spawn or which position you want them to spawn how much health mana and so on so this is basically just the starter section of uh, setting up uh, the player characters when they're creating their characters but uh, more stuff will be added to this for sure so that gives you a bit of a rundown on how the system works uh, it's very simple as you can see we, we try to make it very easy for for people to create things very quickly um, so far we've had it that people can set up their server and everything and get in the game within about 10-15 minutes so the system is extremely flexible very easy to do and uh, that's the main idea that we had behind this whole MMO kit is to make it very flexible and also we wanted to say that these plugins you see here that's not the only plugins there is or can be uh, the system is very open for developers that want to, for instance, create their own plugins. They want to create their own skill system or so forth. Uh, they can write and code their own plugins uh, to get access to the full codes of, of these things. You know, you just need to get to the veteran uh, uh, license. You don't have to have the full source code for the server side of it. Like the server side is, for instance, just the code that you don't get is mostly just for connection stuff and, and you don't need to do any changes to that. If there is anything that uh, that needs to be added or, or changed in it, you know, we are more than welcome to to help you. We definitely want to make sure that this works for everybody and it uh, can create very versatile MMO games. That's very important for us. So uh, next few weeks we'll be bringing out more videos on uh, yeah, tutorials that goes more intense into the plugins showing you exactly how each plugin works how to set things up and uh, helping out a bit of that so we hope you enjoyed this and uh, looking forward to bringing out the next tutorial for you thank you